we've got a really clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. Uh, apparently, I'm Jeremy Carl, although it says Alex Phillips. Uh, we're in with you for the next half an hour. You lucky people to chat through all the stories that have caught your eye this morning. You are my friends with Talk TV. We're on TV, on radio, of course, online, and your smart speaker, aren't well, we? What a privilege to have you on board, Jeremy. I'm just so glad really you had is. salmon for breakfast. Shut up. <laughs> Alex Phillips not here today. No truth in the room. She's nicked camera four, which doesn't work. So yeah, I think she broke camera four. Yeah. I think she may well be better back like later. shouting at it or looking at uh, it? Shouting, no doubt. Uh, she'll be back at 1pm uh, for Crosstalk. Uh, so uh, no need to panic yet, folks. Uh, we've got a lot to get through, though. Uh, this is the fastest half hour in broadcasting. Is Let's it? get going. Yeah, 30 thrilling minutes as we throttle through the headlines. I like the way you did that. 30 thrilling minutes. 30, 30 thrilling, thrilling minutes as we throttle through the headlines. Or you could say hurtle through the headlines. Alliteration is the key. Uh, but uh, first of all, uh, a new poll uh, has revealed You've been talking about this mm. on Talk uh, today, uh, that uh, the Tories are on course uh, for the worst thrashing in their electoral history, which could end up uh, with uh, Keir Starmer having 250 seat, a 250-seat majority and the Tories with as few as 150 seats or less. Uh, so uh, not looking good for uh, Rishi. Uh, listen, say? I am not a Rishi Sunak fan. I've said it all morning. I've said it for the last few months. I, I believe he will never ultimately be, be uh, thanked by the Tory faithful if there's many left because he was the man that brought down Boris Johnson. Whatever you think of Boris Johnson and Partygate, mm. It was only 2019, an 80-seat majority. This government is past ideas. It's 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 like you you're sleepwalking to death. That's how I see it. However, I will say this: I, I could have put camera four, even if it was working, leading the Labour Party right now, yep. and they would beat. The, this is about the Tory government dissatisfaction yeah. with the Tory government. That still doesn't, in my mind, answer. Where's the meat on the bone from the Labour Party? What are well, what's this country actually going to be like? Now, you and I are old enough to remember the last time there was a Labour government before Blair, right? Let me, let me, let me just say this: on polling day, a bit when, like when Thatcher took on the unions, when you put a little cross in the box, right? Yeah. Whatever polls say, I'm not saying the Tories are going to win, but I don't think it will be the massacre that people assume it will. I think they'll lose, right? But I don't think it will be that because people will go. Well, what's their plan on immigration? What's their how that, there isn't any money? I think the country's screwed, and I don't think Keir Starmer has said enough for me to think the Tories will be obliterated. But I do think the Tories will move to the right, yeah, like the rest of Europe. If you extrapolated a recent uh, uh, by-election results or the, the the slew of them that we had. Uh, some polls uh, predicted that the Tories would end up with fewer than eight but, seats. But, but look <laughs> at the last two elections, the two by-elections. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even going to discuss George Galloway, but that was about a Muslim vote. That was an absolute yeah. fact. And look at one in Hillingdon, Boris's old seat. That was won by the Tories on you list. So yep. are we now going to get to a situation where, in fact, you know, if you like MPs, it becomes more local? I think that Sunak doesn't have the vote, he doesn't have the confidence. No. But I would be very surprised if it's a complete massacre. Yeah, that's why I think he does want to struggle on until October, maybe even November, in order to maybe get some decent water under the bridge. They think the economy is turning around. But frankly, uh, talk about grasping at straws. Uh, I do think they're... I mean, they won't do as badly as some polls predict. Direct. I don't think they'll get less than, uh, no. fewer than 150 seats. I think they'll get but, 200 seats. Yeah. They are. That's but it's going to be uh, what uh, Obama called a shellacking. They are going to get annihilated. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, uh, Rishi Sunak said... Uh, a lot of people saying, oh, it shouldn't be Rishi in charge. We need someone else. We need to get Boris back. And the new uh, hero that they're looking at, heroin, if you want to be... Uh, uh, strictly accurate. Uh, shouldn't I? Uh, should I be saying that? Penny Mordaunt. Yes. Penny a woman Mordaunt. famous only for holding a sword. Yeah. Uh, Let's elect the next prime minister because she held a sword. Yeah. Uh, she also uh, thinks that trans women are women. 
which made that famous speech. Trans women are women. A trans woman is a woman. No, Penny, not quite. Nice try, but not biologically accurate. And when you say stuff like that, which you did a couple of years ago, it tends to make your bed and you're now lying on it. That's why you won't the, be the Prime Minister. The interesting thing is, right, Kev, that the right of the Tory party will always do that. They are synonymous, I nearly said that right, with tearing themselves to shreds. It has to be quite desperate for the right to say we'd accept a more centrist politician, Penny Morden, for six months, blah, blah. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to say from both sides. Did this this morning. If you're Penny Morden, right, yep. the chance to lead the party, be a prime minister for six months, and maybe get that extra 50 seats and give yourself some credit might be all right. Plus, it looks like she's going to lose her seat anyway. It's a marginal constituency, mm. so it might make sense. But why would anybody, why would anybody, as Kemi Badnuck said over the weekend, sources close to Badnuck said, no, 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 no. Sunak can take this. Sunak can and ride the rough shot yeah. of this result. And then we'll come afterwards. Sunak is a dead man walking. And if they do this and they try and bring somebody else in, it's not going to change the outcome. Yeah. It's not going to change the outcome at all. I think that uh, a lot of these right wingers, uh, they're touting uh, for uh, Penny Morden because they think she's the only one who is uh, stupid enough to take the job. Uh, she's an empty vessel. She's a point. She's pointless. What I is, like that. What, she's what has she thing. ever said apart apart from you know dressing up like a, a kind of head uh, stewardess on the Hindenburg or something for uh, the uh, coronation? What has she ever said or done apart from things that are deeply unconservative? Like uh, she stood up in the Commons and went, "A trans woman is a trans woman." No, Penny, a trans woman is not a trans woman. Why don't you leave that nonsense to the Green Party and some of the idiots in the Labour Party? Because when what? you said that, you made your bed. It is now you're now lying on it, and you'll never get the gig because you got too woke, didn't you? What 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 is really important actually is 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 I think that a party will come out of the ashes of this next election, very much like the rest of Europe, and there will be a party to the right. Some would say to the right, others would say actually going back to traditional Tory values. You know, like you know, imagine fiscal responsibility, low taxation, secure borders, and a good military. Wow. Fracking. Well, that's what... about fracking. Yeah. Fr Start fracking. Be a Tory party. It's just rid you're absolutely right, Jeremy. Fracking. This lot are not Tories. They're yeah. like Lib Dems, and they wonder why Conservative voters don't want to vote for them because you don't deliver. You're not. Conservatives, you idiots. Uh, now, talking of a proper conservative, Nigel Farage. Oh. Uh, Nigel Farage, oh, uh, who um, remains nominally the president of uh, Reform UK, one day he might even stand up and do something for that party. He isn't at the Doesn't moment. want a seat yet, has yeah. he? Well, he hasn't said anything either. He didn't even turn up to their annual party conference. He was too busy yeah, sucking because up. Because if he does that, then he's going he's gonna to overshadow Poundland. What's he, what's he yes, called? But, uh, Richard Tice. Your friend? Yeah, he's a a friend of mine. Well, he's a friend of mine too. But yeah. how was he described by Lee Anderson as a pound? He, he described he described Richard Tice as a pound land um, Nigel Farage. Yeah, uh, well, and uh, not a bad description. However, Nigel Farage, mm. the, if Reform UK are really to make a big impact, Nigel Farage has to be deeply. He involved. might not want to because this story could, says that he could be a special US envoy to the UK and the EU if Trump becomes president. Yeah, uh, he's very close to Trump. Uh, as I say, when he didn't go to the Reform Reform UK party conference uh, just a couple of two three weeks ago in Darlington he was over kissing up to Trump at a big rally uh, for the former president so Nigel Farage knows where his bread is buttered and it looks as if uh, if Trump wins the presidential election and I think he will he will appoint Nigel Farage as a US envoy to Europe to Britain, uh, to the EU, uh, know, he will be his man in Europe. But you know, there's also rumours over the weekend that he wants to be the US ambassador to the United Kingdom, which involving giving him special citizenship, which could also be approved by um, by Trump if he gets re-elected in Congress. There's no doubt Farage has plans, but we're all we're all presuming we know what they are. Yeah. I have no idea at the moment. Well, but he's got... certainly a big beast that we don't we don't have big beasts anymore, do yeah. we? No, he's no. he's fascinating old Nigel, and uh, I wonder which way he will jump. He either goes this way with Trump. Trump, or he goes more back into Reform UK, starts shouting for the rooftops for that cause as opposed to his own cause. I so... love the fact the producer on this show, this is only my third time, all he does is say on to the next one. Yeah, that's what we, I've we're... just received, ladies and gentlemen, my fee, if we just get the camera yeah. on, my fee for this morning is, is 200, I thought it was pounds, actually... Independence Republic of Mike Graham. So I've just got to do something here. It's actually uh, 20. It's actually 20 pounds. I've, I've just taken... Is, he, is his I've currency a bit here. like Bitcoin? Yeah, so it's all we've got left is 20... 20 I'd 
Twenty, 20 independent Jones. Republican Mike phone? Graham Powell. Is that a phone? No, it might be mine. Oh, right, okay. No, I think it mine. is your phone. Is it mine? It's probably no. Mike Graham. Yeah. <laughs> He's suing us. He's on tonight, uh, by the way, the best show. Uh, by a mile. Uh, Better than this. Uh, Eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Only because I'm on it. It's yeah, usually uh, very good. I, might, I could Kate. say something facetious now. Right now, uh, let's okay. go on. Kate has been seen out, we're told, for the first time since all the furor erupted. very angry erupted. this morning, aren't you, man? Well, I'm always, I'm always angry. Me. She's not the first time she's been set, seen out. A couple of weeks ago, she was seen out driving with, his, with her mum, Carol Middleton. Last week, she was seen out driving with William. Now she's gone to her favourite farm shop with the, shop kid, with, with the kids. She's been there every week, lived for six years. Well, do you know about the uh, geography? I, I will only say about. I tell you what annoys me about this, and I said to Miss Sainer all morning, I am the biggest royalist. You know the old man worked for the royal mm, family for 40 years. I will forever stand up in the face of Republicans. When they said she will be leaving public life for four months, she's having an operation, whatever, that was fine, Mummy, leave it alone. Now, yeah. I understand the Ferrari about that photo. Just leave her alone, leave her alone. But by doing this and a friend saying she looks great, you're feeding it, you're feeding it. We yeah, just leave yeah, her yeah. alone to get better. That's what we need to do. In America, I was told by Kinsey this morning on the show, right? More than Biden, more than Trump added together, Googling, she's the most famous person. She is, by the way, the future of the British monarchy. She is Iron Kate, and she is the reason that the monarchy will survive. Leave her alone, for goodness sake. Quit. Have you read some of the stuff about what they think's going on? Yeah, I quite enjoy it. Um, well, you <laughs> slightly weird. But I do, no, I take your point. This Leave mess, her alone. She's this, an absolute diamond. This mess with her isn't really her fault. It's the losers who work at Kensington Palace. Who took the picture, though? William. Uh, Why did he make his wife apologise? Well, they, Kev. Say, they say William took Why the wasn't picture. it a joint photograph? A, well, joint, a joint statement? I, I think they've I hung her out a little bit, I've got to be honest. I don't think the photo ever existed. I think it's a composite. That's why they won't release the original. Mm. Uh, lies upon lies upon lies, and that's and the And then mess. that feeds the Kate, frenzy, it's right? It's not Kate's no. fault. It's uh, the communications project at Kensington Palace, which, frankly, is in the toilet. They have made the biggest possible mess of this. William has to take some of the blame. I agree with you. I mean, I wouldn't have sent my wife out and said, oh, sorry, it's all my fault. I wouldn't have done that, would no, you? No, you've got to stand in front of your wife. I, I said, can you do me a favour? Can you show them your braces? This is incredible. What's that all about? Uh, well, like an out-of-work newspaper so editor. People, <laughs> that's about the size of it. Yes, uh, I'll tell you. Uh, you, did make, you did make editor, didn't you? Uh, For a not, very short not space not of time. Quite, Let's move on. Quite. Oh, I've cut right to the chase there. Right, uh, by the way, people say to me, what, why do you wear those yellow braces? I go, to keep my trousers up. Bam, bam, I'm here all day. Uh, right. What a shame. <laughs> uh, that's why I get the small bucks. Uh, Charles uh, says he's going to... King Charles, of yep. course, is battling cancer very bravely and uh, we're with you all the way, sir. Uh, he says he's determined to uh, attend this year's Trooping of the Colour, even if it means uh, sort of going there in a car or something like that. So uh, that would be on June the 15th, so we hope he'll, he'll make it, yes? I completely agree. I wasn't particularly enamoured with the picture on, fr on the front. I think it was the mail this morning. I mean, I've said this. I'm not a conspiracy <sighs> theorist. I think he's not that well, but I, I think as absolutely... Is, is his want in life, the way he is, the way he's always been, it's about duty, and, and, and he will do everything he can. Again, you know, for all those people who go, oh, blah, blah. listen, you want to wish for... You want to wish what it would be like without our royal family. He's doing a great job. I, I just... I fear he might be ill, but we'll see. I could be well, wrong. Well, well, yeah, I mean, he does look well at the moment. He's not going to ride a horse, again, is he? why would he? He's undergoing treatment, but... Absolutely. I think he's trying to indicate, listen, folks, a bit like Kate, I am getting better. But that's the problem. As the monarchy gets questions faced with yeah. by the, you know, by the, the younger generation, yeah. are they relevant? They start doing Facebook, TikTok, all of this, I'm going to be there. And then it feeds it, doesn't yeah. it? Because the more you give, the more people want. That's I, the truth. In the I, old days, you never saw the Queen. You didn't know if the Queen had an operation. Absolutely. You didn't know if the Queen was ill. You do one or the change. You do one or the other. Yeah, uh, not so halfway. There, there, this alleged new spirit of transparency with the royal family—they're more transparent, but they're not that transparent. The thing is, so the king says, "I've got cancer," and everyone goes, "Isn't that great that he's uh, shared that with us?" So my question is, well, what, what type of cancer? They won't tell us that. So, Kate, uh, excellent. Oh, I've had a That's exactly uh, what happens. It feeds it, uh, Yeah, yeah. So well, I've done all surgery. What sort is, of... Oh, is he doing it again? Worry, Can we move on, Ryan? Ryan, just slow Yeah, but Take this is back. a new type of broadcasting, Jeremy. What? We have to move fast. Jeez, but man, uh, we've yeah. more in half an hour than I've done in three hours. Kate, Kate is now saying she's yep. going to share with us details of her recovery. Why is she having to do that? Because, frankly, I, I don't want to demand information from her, but she didn't share enough in the first place, or rather the palace. All or nothing. Yeah, exactly right, in. Jeremy. If you just All give or nothing. tit bits, it will just 
uh, fuel the conspiracy theories and everything is now badly out of control. True. So we need more transparency from the royal family uh, fairly soon, I would suggest. Oh, I love this next story. You do it. Watch this. Try and make sure. You, you just look at your camera and see if he's actually going to naturally combust while he's reading. It's going to get redder in the face. Watch, go. Right, here's the thing. Uh, the state broadcast, the BBC, it likes to tell to it, tell us because we have to give it £170 a year. That it is Breathe. Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. It is scrupulous. Come on. Come on. <laughs> it's scrupulously uh, impartial and unbiased. That is not true. No. It's very partial and very biased. Uh, two more BBC journalists are under investigation for liking videos celebrating Hamas's terror attacks. That's not the first time this has happened among the pro-Palestinian BBC, uh, and uh, they need to uh, it's, they need to address their problems, their internal problems. It's ASAP. really it's really obvious to me, and without sounding like I'm I'm, I'm not having a rant with you, right? Yeah, yeah. The BBC is funded by you and I, the taxpayer, who are forced to pay that money. There is no doubt that terrestrial television in this country is on its backside. And the BBC, we can shout from the rooftops, the proof will be in the pudding, because the BBC are so woke and so left-wing that people will stop. Well, just look at the figures. It's just not happening, right? Yeah, yeah. And in the end, they will be victims of their own demise and it will be their fault. Yeah. These people, uh, they, it, it's beyond me. It's Damn beyond it. me. It's not a state broadcaster. It's an organisation that has its own agenda and we're supposed to pay for that agenda whether we agree with that or not. Well, look, here's the world of choice. I want to watch that. I don't want to want to watch that. That's what's going to happen. They're going to shoot themselves in the foot and good luck to everybody who and does it. And they've got this strange, lo this strange policy now of uh, anywhere in the world that they're covering, they hire local people. Yeah. people people who Chief. live there Chief. who are local residents or local citizens. OK, do that if you want, but it, the, it, how you should be doing your job is sending your own people there and interpreting it for us. So when they went to Palestine not so long ago, you had one of their reporters sobbing because a lot of Palestinians had just been killed. Now, sympathy to that reporter, sympathy to the emotion that uh, uh, he was feeling, but that isn't right. You know, they, we shouldn't have a BBC reporter sobbing because his mates just got killed. There's a certain uh, lack of if impartiality you are involved if, if in you that. You are going to sob, then wherever you report yeah. from, you have to sob, and that's the that's the issue. If you've got if you've got a broadcaster that's supposed to be a state broadcast, you know, because of its impartiality, you have to be impartial on both fronts, yeah. or you will risk being uh, shot in the foot. I'm going to move on. This is brilliant. It's my favourite story of the morning. Grant Shapps Go abandoned his Odessa trip because he was on a plane, and apparently there was rumours that Putin could shoot the plane down. Uh, this is a man who's had more cabinet jobs in the... I think he still thought he was the, the transport secretary was trying out a plane, cos he's had about ten jobs in about a year, Grant Shapps, hasn't he? Yeah, well, yeah, the secretary of whatever he's the secretary of this week happens to be defence. Yeah. There'll be something else next week. Uh, another week, another job for uh, mobile Grant. Lucky But man. he was on this plane, and we learnt last week that uh, the Russians, cos this plane flying back from, you, from Poland, yeah. where he'd been visiting, was bombarded by Russian... Uh, uh, tech, uh, rendering the uh, technology on the aeroplane useless. So that was very worrying. Now we know that actually uh, he couldn't go to a planned trip to Odessa in Ukraine for the same reason, that the Russians uh, had him in their sights, they knew he was going and there was too much of a security risk. The big question you have to ask there, Germany... Germany? 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 Uh, Germany uh, uh, it's been a you long know. weekend. Uh, no, the, the big question is what... How how did the Russians know? Absolutely. That's, that's... And, and, and we just did a thing on breakfast, and I, I make no apology for this. All the people that go, oh, Carl, you're warmongering. Let me tell you why we have to keep supporting the Ukrainians, OK? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when Vladimir Putin, and if he wins, he will step outside Ukraine, and then it will become a war for everybody, which is why we should keep giving money, despite how hard it is, and we should keep increasing our defence spending. The shocking thing about this story is... Grant Shapps is so switched on, he did an interview with the Sunday Times when he said, and I quote, Vladimir Putin has shown himself to be reckless, ruthless and careless. He's been in power 25 years, he's a goddamn dictator, man. You yeah. should know by now, shouldn't we? Yeah, indeed, and, and here's a thing, I bet you were surprised about this, because I thought it was on a night. I know what you're going to say. He won the Russian election oh, at shocking. the weekend. Well seven, done, seven, Vladimir. Well done, Vladimir. 77.4% uh, of a population that only get one side of the story from him, who, if they oppose him, will be shot, imprisoned or killed, uh, they voted for him, and, and he said he's very honoured. And then he mentioned, did you hear about this? Yeah. He mentioned Navalny in his speech, not directly, but did you hear about this? Yeah, no, he said, we're going to have a listen uh, to him. Uh, my opposition, and, and I was about to release him before he sadly died. Yeah, sure you were. 
Yeah, yeah but you decided to kill him instead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's have a listen to uh, Putin uh, triumphantly addressing the nation after scoring a, a record 87% victory in those rigged, ridiculous, pointless elections. Take it away, Vlad. You know, the performance over the last couple of years has shown that the administrative team, in the broad sense of the word, has been very effective, and the results of the work are satisfactory. This applies to the government, the central bank and the presidential administration. The question now is to determine who will work most effectively and in what place in order to maximise the overall results of the teamwork. Well, he's still got it, hasn't he? Uh, well done, Vlad. Very, it, it, Is that him, though, or one of his five body doubles? It's a bit puffy face. Very, very uh, unexpected it? victory there at the... At the uh, yeah, I was shocked. Were you shocked? Oh, absolutely stunned. I've got a great story for you next, so I'm going to let you do the next okay, story, because it's this, brilliant. This drives me nuts. Uh, the Victorian <laughs> Albert Museum uh, in central London, which I think gets something like 67, 67 million quid from the government. Uh, it's got a sort of Punch and Judy exhibit right now, and in it are cartoon villains, including Osama Bin Laden, Adolf Hitler and, drumroll, Margaret Thatcher. That's ridiculous. Why is she lined up alongside Hitler and Osama Bin Laden? What was her crime exactly? Oh, I know, getting back, voted back four times because she was such a popular and important Prime Minister. I guess Angela Rayner will be upset this morning because if Margaret Thatcher hadn't allowed people to buy their own council houses, our Angela would have been homeless. Do you want to hear the best story of the morning? Go on, then. Uh, so, years ago, in another life, let's not go into detail, I was doing a show, and GQ magazine contacted us and they did a survey of two and a half thousand people in the United <laughs> Kingdom for oh, the yeah. least, well, for the most hated person in the world. Pol Pot came fifth. This was 2011. Yeah. Pol Pot came fifth. Uh, Saddam Hussein came third. Adolf <laughs> Hitler, uh, fourth. Adolf Hitler came third. I, Jeremy Carl, came second. And Osama bin Laden came <laughs> first. And when they took Osama bin Laden out, I got the award posthumously and it's still at home. Yeah. So there you are. Maggie, I'm sorry for the disrespect, but at least you weren't around to witness it, but the VNA, 67 million do one. Yeah, I mean, but you, you lost your touch. I mean, how come you got beaten by Osama bin Laden? Asian Romeo, when you can't even win that, you are. What's wrong with you, Kyle? I, I was going to say, I Crazy. think you could have beaten Osama, at least. I didn't. Uh, now, All right, uh, we're moving on, bossy. Congratulations. Ooh, well done, uh, Jeremy. Thanks, mate. Uh, the won. second most hated person <laughs> in all of history. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> right, uh, here's a good one. Uh, Lloyds Bank, uh, which owns a number of uh, subsidiaries, including TSB and uh, the Scottish Widows uh, oh outfit. Oh, my God. Uh, they have it, it advised staff, because they're very woke, the way banks tend to be, yeah. uh, to avoid certain languages. And one of the work words they said they have to avoid is widows, because because it's too vivid and, for some customers, may uh, bring up uh, traumatic memories. Sorry, right? can, I, can I ask uh, a question here? Yeah. Scottish widows, presumably yeah. people will contact them when they've been widowed because they know that they would have a policy that would appeal to them or yes, something. Yes, and also, also or before. it's going to be very hard for the staff of Scottish widows never to say the word widows. Uh, who do you work for? Scottish... <laughs> And what about the woman in black in it's the adverts? What's happened to her? Well, she's still, I mean, she's still around, but Is presumably she? she's outlawed by... But how... You know, it's a, it's a bit like saying, right, uh, Lloyd's bank staff, we've decided that the word Lloyd's is too offensive. You well, must never use that yeah, again. Shouldn't. How can the staff of Scottish widows not use the word widow? Ready? Did you Lloyds claim the word is unnecessarily vivid, right, and may trigger unwanted personnel memories, personal yeah. memories of trauma and upsetting situations. Your partner's dead, you want some money for it. Go to Scottish widows. What, what the hell's wrong with these people? What is vivid about them? What do you mean vivid? What, why is the word widows vivid? What does that even mean? That means we've got to a point where you can't say, you're a widow because your husband died, because that'll be trauma. These people are disappearing up their woke backsides. It's just ridiculous. There we and go. everybody at Scottish Widows, say Widows as much as you can. Uh, and talking backsides, let's finish on a high. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon, uh, when she uh, sort of uh, self-destroyed, uh, self-destructed... When the crankiest stopped being when, booked. Yeah, yeah she, um, uh, she, she quit, you remember, mm. saying it was time to a new challenges. Actually, she'd uh, steered the SNP into such a mess uh, with uh, putting male rapists into female prisons, etc. Can I say something serious about... Why I, anyway. you know, can I say something serious that annoys me about this woman, yeah. right? There were thousands of people in Scotland who genuinely and quite rightly in their mind joined the SNP mm -hmm. and paid their hard-earned money because they believed in Scottish independence. Their democratic right. And what did she yeah. and her husband, allegedly, and Hamza Useless, 
Where is all that money? I would feel really cheated if I was a Scot who believes in independence. I really would. Well, here's where some of the uh, Scottish taxpayer pound went. Uh, when she quit, uh, basically in disgrace. I mean, she completely screwed everything up. She never got independence. She disappeared because the British court said, no, you're not getting a second referendum. So she was rendered pointless. Meanwhile, she was under investigation uh, for alleged uh, financial impropriety at the SNP. So was her husband. So was the chief executive. You remember the police were digging up her garden and all that, so she quit in disgrace. Guess what? Hey, travels up. She walked away with a £64,000 payoff. Eight grand Isn't a year. Isn't that special? Eight grand for every year's service. And this is this is obviously an alleged comment. I'm sure you could have bought a camper van for 64 grand, couldn't you? Yeah. Uh, Motorhome? I, I do believe it was 110000 but certainly Second the 64000 would have gone a long way to buying that uh, SMP motorhome, which was 110000 mysteriously parked uh, on the front drive of Nicola Sturgeon's in-law. Make of that what you will. Why did they need a uh, big, uh, great big mobile home? Uh, meanwhile, uh, let's quickly... Uh, Anti-shoplifting measures at Primark. Sorry. So basically what they're going to do now, because <laughs> <laughs> what, the, the thieves... Thieves were basically they're, walking they're in with Primark picking up the bags, bags putting, putting a load the thing of the... in, no tax, walking out. So now they're going to put big stickers over all the bags with big signs saying, sold, sold. You sort of... Uh, what about the tag thing that bleeps? Whenever yeah. I try okay, to go on, something, then... I'm joking. Don't you have a tag on stuff? Uh, uh, I you guess don't mean shopping, have you? Well, no, I, I send the staff to do that. Do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. I've never been to a, a, a proper retail shop. But no, seriously. So, yeah. Well done, Are Primark. there bleeps on this as well? Uh, probably. Anyway, uh, it's just another measure by Primark. So many sh stores having to come up with new and imaginative ways to stop the scourge of just massive amounts of shoplifting. Billion pounds worth a year. Listen, thank you very much indeed. Uh, what an absolute pleasure to sit next to you, a, 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 a yellow braces wearing member. You can shake, man. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, that's the end of the show. See you for breakfast tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock. Julie. Hartley Brewer, the legend, is here next. Cross -port talk at 1 pm. This is what we do, Jeremy. Up oh, the hammers. That's it. That's it. Up, up, up the hammers. hammers. VAR's rubbish. Bye. Bye. See you later at 1 pm. <laughs>Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Oi, oi, right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Ooh, <we're missing. laughs> there was a suggestion by some.